Taxi operator shot dead in Linstead. A taxi operator was gunned down while loading his vehicle in Linstead St. Catherine on Saturday night. He has been identified as 42-year-old Ian Peters of Commodore District in the parish. No motive has been established for the fatal shooting. The police are seeking for his attackers. It is reported that about 6 p.m., Peters was loading his taxi in the town when he was approached by a man who shot him repeatedly. The injured man was taken to the Linstead Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Fisherman shot and killed in Russia, Westmoreland. After almost two years of relative peace, the vital community of Russia in Westmoreland has been robbed by the murder of a fisherman and the wounding of another man Saturday night. The deceased has been identified as 27-year-old Kemar Wilson, otherwise called Moy, of Rickett Street in the parish. The community has been under a zone of special operation Sosa since January 16, 2022, but there was not enough to deter gunmen from wreaking havoc just 24 hours before the end of the year. Reports from the Savannah Lamar police are that about 10.55 p.m., both men were standing on a section of the roadway when a black Toyota Voxy motor car drove up and two men alighted with handguns. The gunmen then opened fire at Wilson and the other man who ran in separate directions. When the shooting subsided, both men were found suffering from what appeared to be gunshot wounds. They were taken to hospital, where Wilson was pronounced dead and the other man is being treated. Two teenagers died tragically during the Zozo in Russia last year. On June 30 of last year, 17-year-old Jerry Francis, otherwise called G, of Ricketts Street was shot dead in a yard on Ricketts Avenue in Savannah Lamar, Westmoreland. This year, 13-year-old Kamoya Jenkinson was stabbed to death in Russia on Holy Thursday. She was visiting family for the holidays as she resided in St. James. Security Guard Gondong in St. Anne A security guard was shot and killed during a robbery in River Oaks, which were St. Anne on Saturday. He is 21-year-old Mr. Parson of Valley Bush in St. Mary. Reports from the St. Anne Police are thus about 11 p.m. Parson was at a premises with four other individuals when gunmen pounced upon them demanding money. When the demand wasn't met, the army reported the open gunfire, hitting Parson and another man. The men then proceeded to rob the individuals and left with a sum of cash. The wounded people were taken to hospital, where Parson was pronounced dead and the injured man admitted. Monica Hewitt, a resident of the era, said the killing has left the entire community in shock. She said the incident has brought the year to a dreadful end. Almost the last day of the year and a man died, it is rough. This is a time when people should be coming together and enjoying themselves, not killing off each other, she stated. It happened before the new year, but it was almost like a bad start to the new year, because next year, we are still going to be talking about this. Someone lost their life while the person wasn't even on the road. It is very troubling, she added. And while Hewitt did not know the deceased, she expressed that no one should lose his or her life defending what they work to achieve. You were a for your things, and then somebody feeling next day they should come and take it like that, and they were never there when you have to be working for it. That very out order, she argued. She said the perpetrators should be ashamed of themselves. Whosoever do this, your time is coming, God not sleeping, and you shall be ashamed of yourself. Go and work like everybody else, or one day, you will try to rob the wrong person, Hewitt stated. Heavy rain lashes Portland, don't pour results in flooding power outages. Heavy rains lashed sections of Portland on Sunday, New Year's Eve, resulting in power outages, fallen trees, and flooded roadways. Section of the Royal Grand Valley was affected as fallen trees block roads and damaged houses. Among the block roads were a section of Norwich and Nuttall and Canewood roads. Meanwhile, a fallen tree damaged a house in Stanton. Margie Kitson, who occupies the house with her son, recounted the frightening experience. From about 11.30 Saturday night, I feel like an earthquake, and from that, I don't drop back to sleep. About 3 o'clock in the morning, I heard like something drop on the house, and my son come out and say to him, Is the tree come down on the house? And him say yes.
Then someone tell me who to call and I called the fire brigade and the police, she told the reporters. The police came about 4 o'clock, walk around and do what they had to do and the fire brigade came and do the same. That's an inside bus and come down and the house leaking, she added. In West Portland, the road of Canewood in Hope Bay was black as the bridge of finish was flooded. There was also a fallen tree at a section of the Seaview Farm Road. Banana and plantain farmers in the Stanton and Fellowship areas were also left flooded. There was still light rain in the area up to late in the afternoon. So the heavy rains have been an impacting uh, most of the northern parishes and in particular St. Mary, Portland and St. Thomas. We have had a number of roads being impacted mostly in Portland to include the stretch from Churchill Corner to Muir Park. The Windsor to Morton Road is once again being impacted. The Breastwork uh, Road is also being impacted. We have um, issues in the Springbank area as well. Also at Black Hill, most of these issues are related to landslides, fallen trees, and bad discovered surfaces. In St. Mary, we have had issues in the, on, on the road through the junction. The road from Grandy Hall to Scotts Hall was in part of the earlier. It has been reopened to single lane, and that effort continues. In Port Morant, there was flooding overnight into this morning, and again, that's uh, an area which is low-lying, and once the rainfall is of high intensity or over a certain intensity, then flooding is always likely in that space. 68-year-old motorcyclist dies in St. Anne Crash. A 68-year-old man has died as a result of injuries he sustained in a crash on Milford Wood in Ochre St. Anne on Friday. Dead is ever Downer of Shark Park Orchards in the parish. Police reports were that about 9 a.m. Donor was riding his motorcycle on the roadway when he made a turn onto the opposite section of the road and collided with a motor car. He was thrown from his motorcycle. The police were summoned and on arrival, Donor was seen with multiple injuries and was taken to hospital where he died while being treated. Meanwhile, Janice Edwards, an alleged eyewitness to the crash, who said she knew Donna personally, expressed sadness at his death. It is so sad, I was driving behind him, and saw so when he stopped to talk to somebody, then he made a sudden turn into an oncoming car, which hit him, she stated. Edwards, who spoke to reporters, said she has been recounting the tragic incident since it happened. All I can see is him being flung in the air along with his bike. I was shaken, traumatized. I can't function, Edwards stated. The OTRS police are investigating the incident. Since the start of the year, some 421 people have been killed in road crashes. 43 of the deaths occurred in St. Anne. NHD encourages caution in submitting refund applications to avoid scams. The National Housing Trust NHD is encouraging qualified contributors to exercise caution when applying for their refunds as unscrupulous persons may seek to perpetrate scams. The NHD will commence accepting applications for a refund of contributions made in 2016 on January 1, 2024. Qualified contributors are being reminded that they may apply for the refund at any time during the year for contributions made in 2016 or earlier. In addition, the NHD will extend the cash refund grant to eligible public sector workers for the upcoming year. Further, existing mortgages who receive their loan directly from the NHD or being reminded that they will receive their contributions refund as a credit to their mortgage account. Refund applications may be submitted exclusively online through the official NHD channels. They are NHD website www.nhd.gov.jm, the NHD mobile app, and the NHD online portal online nhd.gov.jm. The fund is advising contributors to exercise caution when applying online and ensure to use a secure official NHD platform. It noted that at the start of a new refund period, there is often an increase in fictitious communication purporting to be from NHD. The NHD only sends communication regarding successful refunds or requests for a customer's contact if there is a problem with the application submitted. Ignore unsolicited emails claiming to be from NHD. Do not click on any links in emails that seem suspicious or ask for personal information. Official communication will guide you to secure NHD platforms. It is therefore urging contributors 
to avoid third-party websites or unofficial channels. To prevent delays, the NHT is also encouraging applicants to ensure that they carefully input accurate information during the application period, double-check details such as name, banking information, and contribution history. Applicants must have their National Identification Scheme NIS, and Taxpayer Registration Number TRN cards readily available during the application process. Customers are being reminded that the service standard for the processing for a contribution refund is 15 working days where the application was submitted correctly. The NHT will send perhaps one of two types of communication. So one, if it is that the application was not um, put on correctly and there is an error with the information that was provided, the NHT will send you a notification advising you that there is an error and advise you to reach out to us. And I stress that because we've noticed a particular scam where, where and I'll call it what it is, where, where people are being asked to confirm banking information and that kind of thing via email. No, that is not the NHT. NHT will not ask you to confirm any banking details or any part of the, your, your application um, via email. If there's a challenge with your application, we'll ask you to reach out to us. The other piece of communication we send is once the application has been successfully completed and the refund, uh, they've been dispatched. Your tech academic staff reported the restive Students Union concern about grades. The UTEC Students Union Council is expressing concern that a reported industrial action by academic staff at the university may result in delays including the delivery of grades. There was no indication of the reason of the reported action by the workers. In a statement on Saturday, the body said it has made contact with the necessary personnel to facilitate discussions aimed towards minimizing the negative effects as much as possible. It said it will provide students with additional details once it receives further information. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.